Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining my channel and my, you know, podcast, whatever you want to call it. I am Katie Brannon, and this is Tea Time True Crime with Katie, where I just chill on my awesome microphone and I sip some tea because it relaxes me, because the um, subject matter can be very hard on the mental health. Absolutely, especially if you love people as much as I do. All right, we have peppermint tea. And uh, with this story, I want you to grab your comfort items, whether it is a blanket, um, whether it is something, you know, maybe a sweater, because this story is really rough. It is, um, if you heard about the Me Too movement, we're going to be going in that kind of area, okay? Now, this is going to be another Playboy tale. And before I go on, I have wonderful crystals around me um, with beautiful energy. I have white candles around me, and I have been just focusing on the good and just, you know, asking this person, I know it sounds silly, may I please tell her story even though she's no longer with us. I have been studying this person for days now. Um, after this, I definitely need like a palette cleanser just to just something, maybe some cartoons to just make my mind in a happy, better place. Um, so as you know, I do true crime, but I do solved cases, unsolved, and I am just really grateful for the support that I have because I'm just doing the best I can and I'm living a dream. So you guys subscribing, liking, commenting, you it's pretty amazing. I really, really appreciate it. So again, um, this content is not for everyone. I'm going to go into details. I'm going to talk about two different things that are going on right now because there is facts and there is speculation. So this is from the 1970s. We're going back to the 1970s era, and I'm going to be talking about Star Stowe. She was actually a February centerfold, I mean a playmate centerfold, in February of 1977. As I've been researching these Playboy murders, um, Star is the one that really stuck out for me. And another girl as well, which we're going to do next. But right now, it's all about my beautiful Star. She was also Japan's centerfold as well, which, my gosh, she must have been on top of the moon. But before we get to this finale of her being in Playboy, I like to say finale because it was the biggest point of her life. And then it seemed to just all go down there, all go down from there, okay? So Star Stowe was born... March 19th, 1956, in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, she was 17 years old, and when she decided to do a two-day drive from Arkansas to Hollywood. Now, when she was 17, she was um, dating a high school boy, and he kept saying how beautiful she was, and he kept telling her, and, you know, he wanted her to pose for new nude photos. And she finally, you know, gave in and she was all excited. And she mailed those photos in. And when she mailed those photos in, Hugh Kefner uh, really, really liked what he saw. So he invited her to the mansion. Now, I'm going to cut right here. Now, at the end of my video, I do have a diary expert um, excerpt, excuse me, yes, from her diary, but I'm telling you it is really rough. If you are still with me at the end of the story, I will tell it, but I do get into the nitty gritty, and I'll tell you what source I got this information, because for me it's a little too hard to believe, because I hear different things about this time in her life, but I will tell you that anyway because I found out, so I want you guys to know too. But again, it's um, it's not very pretty, but I feel like it definitely opens up to what she first 
came to the Playboy Mansion and, and like the true debauchery. So, okay, so let's take a pause on that one and we're gonna go to when she actually, she has aspirations to being a dancer, okay? And she actually was like this rock and roll musician. She was one of the first Playboy uh, centerfolds to actually have a tattoo below her pubic area, and um, which is pretty exciting. And when she did her Playboy spread, it was it was awesome. It really was. It was like a kick-ass spread. You just felt nothing but confidence. Like, look at me. Um, people said when she was doing the Playboy spread that she was just ready to go. You know. Um, she was just secure in her body and loved herself. Another photographer said, a playboy, that women were very insecure, nervous, shy. Star was the opposite, okay? Star knew what she was getting into, or maybe she didn't. Now in 1975, okay, now six months after being at, in the Playboy Mansion, okay, she, there is an Elton John birthday party. And that is where she meets Gene Simmons. Yes, the frontline dude of Kiss. Um, can't remember his birthday right now, but I believe he was a Virgo. Mm hmm. Yes, a male that is a Virgo. So a Virgo, Pisces. Yeah, not. That's a, it's a pretty good mix, actually. Um. You know some better than others of course it's not like just a universal thing here so she dated a lot of musicians you know um, she had this thing with Blackie Lawless from Wasp and he dated Star and he actually wrote the song Ball Crusher after her so she actually moved in the Playboy Mansion in 1977 I'm guessing she was just like there not completely moved in yet again the the time frame is a little washy and wishy it, it is but we do know that it's the 1970s and we do know that star was this playboy centerfold that literally took my gosh the world by storm because back in those days when you were a centerfold for playboy that, that's it you made it because when you get in a Playboy, you are noticed, okay? Six million copies were read in a month in the 1970s of Playboy, and she was the February. And her pictures were, of course, scanty clad, but they were kind of like, I mean, they described it as soft porn because she literally had her leg out, you know, there, there's a guitar in front of her. She's nude, it's really sexy, and it's like really empowering. She's just like this awesome rock and roll chick. According to the Playboy Murders on HBO Max, um, she had to sleep with Hugh Kefner. Uh, she was one of the main pretty girls. And when you are a main pretty girl of Hugh Kefner, if he has a liking to you, Yes, you get a lot of awesome things, you know, uh, apparently you get a car, you get a nice luxury place to live, you get credit cards, you get this awesome lifestyle. But of course, with that lifestyle, you have to sleep with Hugh Kefner. She had to sleep with him at least twice a week, and she was still with Gene Simmons at the time. So he was a womanizer too, and she was doing her things in the 1970s, flower child, Everybody having fun, right? Okay. So, I mean, maybe she wasn't because she had to sleep with Hugh Hefner, but we, you know. Um, but she, she did to keep her lifestyle. And according to other playmates in the house during that time, you know, it's kind of like in, in doc, indoctrination. I never can say that word right, guys. But basically, to have what you want to get you far in your career whether you want to be a singer, actress, entertainer, anything in the media, Playboy is where you want it to be, okay? So she not only had to have sexual relations with Hugh Kefner, he also made her have sex with his friends. Yeah. And 
Um, according to other playmates, they were gross. I'm guessing they were older men. She was not into them at all. So what he would do was he would, you know, um, liquor her up, gave her a lot of alcohol, and gave her drugs as well. Cocaine, and he also would give the other girls quaaludes. Now quaaludes, when I think of quaaludes, I think of Wolf on Wall Street, where Leonardo DiCaprio is on quaaludes, and it's like really kind of funny, but, but this isn't funny. Um, because I'm, I'm doing this example because he's very lethargic in the movie, even though Leo has problems, okay, but he does not ever take any drugs or anything like that, which is cool. So we actually hired someone to figure out how would he be on quaaludes, and then he just, you know, acted the shit out of the bit, you know? So quaaludes make the girls very lethargic, relaxed, really don't care what's happening to them. So Star for like, it said like a year, getting like passed around per se, stuff like that. Um, when she was with Gene Simmons, they met apparently at, um, like I said, six months later with at Elton John's birthday party. And it was a hot time, they met in an elevator and she recognized him without his makeup, which really impressed him. And they had a fun time in the elevator. And allegedly, she had a fun time with the band as well. She, she wanted to be known more than a groupie, and I want her to be known more than a groupie. I mean, it's 1970s, you have fun, you know, you're with like the rock gods, you must feel like on top of the world, you know? But then when, you know, someone starts drugging you and you have to forcefully have sex with people, that's not cool. Like, that is, no, okay? So now Jean gets wind of her doing cocaine because she cannot stop. Because she just, like, according to other play, playboys, I mean playmates, you kind of have to be out of it to be in this lifestyle. If you want to have some main girls, you have to be straight up out of it. So they can do whatever they want. I know, it's, it's horrible, horrible. Um, but one thing about Jean Simmons is... I don't know later in life, I don't know much about him honestly, I knew he had this reality show, but he broke up with Star because he found out she was on coke and believe it or not, he was a straight laced guy apparently, you guys. He did not do any drugs at all as a rock musician, so yeah, so apparently he broke up with her because it was just too much. And she was broken. She was devastated. In his book, he seems to like forget about timelines they were together. But, you know, according to like documentaries, they're together for three years, which that is a long time to be like a musician's girlfriend, you know? So by this time, she is really, really devastated. I mean, devastated. And she gets more into drugs and alcohol. Now, her friend said, you know, back then, there wasn't the resources as they, as they do now. So she, she really needed help, but she, you know, didn't realize she needed help kind of thing. And now, there are two sides to every story. This is the first side. The first side of why she got kicked out of Playboy was because... She kind of like Yoko ono you know what I'm saying? Like with the Beatles, no disrespect or anything like that, but I'm just saying Yoko Ono got between the Beatles and got them to fight. But apparently Star Stowe um, got with the band, like the band and there were feelings and some more feelings and jealousy and stuff. And the band manager called Hef and was like, you know, we need to, you know, you, 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 we, we got a problem with one of your playmates. And of course, you know, Hef, Hugh Hefner has friends in all kinds of places. So he's just like, all right, I'll take care of it. So he just like basically threw, out, threw her out on the street. Like he grabbed all her stuff from the Playboy Mansion and she just like, he just like threw her out. He took away the car, he took away the sponsors, the endorsements, everything. She had nothing. And she made a lot of money, 
lots of money and um, she had nice things but drugs and alcohol that's expensive so okay that's part one is how she okay now part two now not not part two but option two is what why she got kicked out was she couldn't take it anymore at the Playboy Mansion she could not just take being touched by all these men and just being a spectacle of people because after that happens you just you you, you lose your like innocence and your flower child vibe because you've just been abused and they consider you damaged goods so she stood up to Hefner and apparently abused him and that was it he she was out he didn't get her help or anything like that she was just out so again those are the two um, options nothing is in stone um, but I just like to say that like what Hef did was no bueno and she was just a young girl she was only 22 years old when she was kicked out on her own and she was addicted to drugs and alcohol at that time so she, apparently she went into adult movies hardcore adult movies and that didn't work out and then she went dancing and then she actually moved to Las Vegas and met this guy named Peter Maligo and they got married I believe in 1981 she had a son named Michael which Michael really loved his mother he thought um, she was a cool mom you know when she was trying to get better he had nothing but cool things to say about his mom apparently she made this awesome beef stir-fry and they would play video games together that's cute I, I love that honestly so at 30 years old you know your body isn't what it is in your teens and 20s and she had a baby so her dancing jobs just started to dry up so she moved to Fort Lauderdale Florida because she used her fame as being a centerfold to maybe get more money that way and like I said for a while she she did really good and then again here the dancing jobs have dried up in 1990 she got arrested for drug possession and she actually wrote a letter to a friend saying that she is going to turn her life around she needs help and you know things are going to change you know she was really trying to be better she was trying to be sober she was trying to get her act together so almost 20 years to the day of her being a centerfold sadly that's when her body was found March 1997 her body was found behind a pharmacy strangled and she was face down now her death is still unsolved there are three perpetrators though her case has just been opened it is it is a cold case but with uh, DNA and technology I'm excited that her case is now opened again so this is the first thing the first thing these are the first perpetrators the third one you won't you won't believe um but with different kind of podcasters I've watched and listened to you know what I mean truth is stranger than fiction so I'm just trying to give it to you guys all what I got so the first perpetrator is going to be uh, her pimp sadly he used to sell her drugs and um, I'm guessing she wanted to leave the lifestyle and he dropped her off or we, we don't even know if he dropped her off we don't know if there was an altercation because when the detective found out that he was the last one seen with her he got the van into evidence but all the carpet was ripped out I mean everything was ripped out of that vehicle there was no forensic evidence or anything in that vehicle so already the, the detective was like mm -mm. Um, another perpetrator was there was a serial killer that has not been found who killed a few other women and they were both 
um, sex workers as well. And as you know that, you know, um, she did become a prostitute, such a, such a awful name, but she had to pay her bills. She had to put a roof over her head. And during that time when she was trying to get better, she did send her son away to her mother in Arkansas to make sure he has a better life. And of course she missed him, so she wanted to do better. And sadly, this is how her life ended up. So, okay, part two, um, like I said, the serial killer, right? The third one though, according to John Belushi, yes, the one who died of a drug overdose, who was a famous SNL, um, not John Belushi, is it James Belushi? Oh my gosh, my brain just like melted for a second. Sorry about that guys, it is John Belushi. Um, when he was, um, I guess he, he talked to, I guess they were friends, I'm not sure, but John Belushi was known to have sex workers, you know, and Star was one. So she was trying to tell John, like, hey, you know what, I'm going to write a book, okay, and I'm going to contact Hugh Hefner, and, and of course she contacts Hugh. And apparently he goes, yes, yeah, Star, I'll do anything to help you out. And then a week later, she's dead. Three different scenarios. Please tell me down in the comments below what you think what happened. Um, it is a really horrible story. And I'm sure if you guys made it this far, you do want to hear about her diary entry. Okay, warning. Warning. So with those three speculations and her case being unsolved, no worry, I will get to dead bugs regulation, <clears throat> recollection. So the detective really believes that she knew her killer and, and it wasn't random. I don't know. Again, let me think, what do you guys think? Um, let me know by the comments below. Okay. So if you don't know what dead bug is on YouTube, I, I kind of don't want to talk about him. No offense, dead bug. You are a wow kind of YouTuber. Like you don't give a f about anything. Um, his storytelling is nitty gritty and does not hold back. Um, his narration, it does pull you in. I will, I will give you that but it, it's a lot and he does not give a but he has millions of views on his videos so i mean he must be doing something right so i watched his port uh you know portrayal of star of his video and it was it was rough but i will he says according to her diary okay hefner didn't seem as friendly as the letter he wrote her remember he wrote her a letter and she came even though Gene Simmons says that he is the reason why you know he, he, he is the reason why she was in Playboy but then they're saying like he is the reason why her name is star so there's definitely miscommunication there but um before we get into the scary what what I've seen in other podcasters and according to Playboy murders when she was underage and tried to get into a club, she couldn't get in and the bodyguard was like, star, star. He was basically like singing that Rolling Stone song and then that stuck. And she didn't want to seem egotistical at all. I mean, she, she doesn't. I mean, really, she's just a sweet girl with dreams, you know, just ambitious. Um, she also was in love with the stars. The planetarium was one of her favorite places. So I thought that was kind of cool, you know, that she took the name Star, Star Stowe. Yes. Sorry, you can tell I'm stalling because I just, this is upsetting. Okay, I need to be better, right? Okay, I'm doing this for Star because you need to know what happened to Star. So according to Deadbug, um, like I said, if you want to check him out on YouTube, definitely do that. But, um, okay, he says, according to her diary, 
we were at, Hefner didn't seem as friendly as the letter he wrote her, because he wrote her a letter for her to come to the mansion. He told her to automatically get cleaned up because he was throwing a party in her honor. Cool, right? You're at the Playboy Mansion. Oh my gosh, like this is amazing. You see the most beautiful people. So that night, when she came downstairs, there was like 200 people in the mansion. There were actors and actresses and all kinds of famous people in, in different circles. John Holmes at the time, um, he's more famous to have like this huge, oh man, I don't, I don't like to, mm, okay, a huge manhood, let's just say that. The scientific word is penis. He is known to have a 12 inch penis. He was very famous back in the 70s for his porn videos. And he also was very famous if you watch that movie Wonderland, whoa, where he got these people killed. That, that could be a whole different episode if you want me to do that. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to do the, the Johnny Holmes episode. And of course, it's all about drugs, of course, drugs and sex. Anyway, Johnny Holmes was a notorious porn star at the time with his large penis. And all of a sudden, you know, star is right there and he rips her dress in front of everyone. And then he just starts just, just anally just having sex with her in front of everyone. And that is like brutal, this young girl. And everyone was cheering. Now... While that, while that was happening, Hef watched intensely while eating red licorice and smoking a joint. So what happens when you forcefully go into a woman's anal cavity and you're not very sweet and nice about it? Well, things come out the other end. And sadly, that happened to Star. Apparently, yeah, horrible, that poor young girl. And so after that, after he was done and everyone was cheering and it was over, Hef named the party the chain he named the party the, the pig party. So yeah, that's that's rough. Like you 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 were a girl with these dreams and they are just taken away from you. I don't want to blame her mother. I don't want to blame the parents. I'm like, where are the parents? You're 17. You're driving cross country, you know, and back in those days, they didn't really talk about any, I mean, anything like that. But that, that time in Playboy is where it was the worst of the Me Too kind of thing. Like, like I said, men just did what they wanted. It was a free for all. There were orgies. Um, hopefully a lot of that was consensual. I pray it was consensual because do you boo-boo, you know what I'm saying? But that that's according to dead bugs. I think that's very grisly, but I wanted to say it because it shows it shows Star going into the world of Playboy and then like and then how she ends up face down on the ground. It behind a pharmacy, strangled to death. I, I don't, I don't understand that. I just, yeah. So I don't understand a lot of things, but that is the tragic story of Star Star Stow. And thank you so much for listening or watching. I really appreciate it. Please know that you are loved and cherished and sending positive energy to Star's family. And if you have an addiction or problem or you think something's going on, there are definitely resources to help you. Um, yeah, I got my information from different podcasters, articles. Of course, the one that sticks out is Dead Bugs. And then, um, yeah. If you are interested in a Playboy or anything like that, I recently um, saw this awesome YouTube channel and you can add starlets and harlots. And I believe her name is Hendrix. 
Stella Rose Hendricks. Yes, check her out on YouTube. She has articles of actually Star Stow. She has two part video. They're pretty long, but it's it's worth it. She actually finds other articles and pictures of Star. So where how I feel about her, I hope you guys feel about her too, that she was not just some groupie that was just thrown away. She was a girl with big dreams who had a ferocious heart and she was just, you know, ready for anything or, you know, like I said, so she thought. But thank you, thank you again for um, hanging out with me and I cannot wait to see you guys again. ADHD is real people and yeah, can't wait to see you later. Sending all the love and beautiful vibes. Bye.